I think I'm going to go back to not reading out all the authors because I don't want to insult all eight by uh, mispronouncing their name. Um, but Brian is going to give the talk. Okay. <coughs> okay, so hello everyone. I'm Brian Wong from Mobile and HCI Lab at National Taiwan University. And today I'm going to present Circuit Stack, supporting rapid prototyping and evolution of electronic circuits. This is joint work with my advisor, Mike Chen, and others from National Taiwan University. So what exactly is Circuit Stack? Music. PPCS. I have a breadboard. I have a circuit. Ah, uh, breadboard circuit. I have a circuit. I have a printer, uh, printed circuit, rebel circuit, printed circuit, uh, printed per oh, circuit stack. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so circuit stack combines the best of breadboard and the best of printed circuit paper. Breadboard is the most common electronic prototyping method. It's compatible with the most components and it's easy to plug and unplug them. Seems similar to 3D printers projects, lots of breadboard schematics can be found online, so you can easily build and extend upon them. However, one of the main drawbacks of breadboard is that most circuits end up looking like this. Again. <laughs> All these manual connected wires are error prone and time consuming. Oh. Instead of manual connecting wires, printed circuit paper from Ubicomp 2013 uses conductive inks to print functional circuits. It elim eliminates human errors and saves time in connecting the physical wires. However, if we want to change the circuit, typically we need to print out a new piece of paper and then detach and reattach every single component onto it. It takes extra time compared with breadboard. As a result, it lacks circuit reconfigurability. What if we can combine the pros of breadboard and printable circuits. That is circuit stack. So how do you actually combine it? The first challenge we encounter is to interface the breadboard layers and printed circuit paper. Typically, there are about 60 to 120 rows of female headers on the breadboard. Um, how can we... Oh, Sorry. How can we make sure all of them are fully connected with circuit paper? At first, we have tried probes to interface the breadboard layer with the traces. However, there's a problem, problem that almost, it's almost impossible to guarantee the equal height of all the probes because of the production and soldering errors. So we turn to a contact spring, which is a compressible probe whose height has a range from 1.0 to 1.6 millimeter. The compressibility gives the tolerance of dimension errors. Then we replace the probes with contact spring to ensure the contacts between two layers. So the first challenge is solved. Another challenge is the cross wires on the printed circuit paper. When the circuit grows more, uh, grow more complex, the rules on the printed circuit paper may intersect each other's, which leads to short circuits. So how do we tackle this? If we can't do it in 2D, just go to 3D. So we come up with a multi-layer structure to stack more printed circuit. There are two different kinds of layers in our design. The breadboard layer, and the circuit layer. Let's dig, in, dig into those layers deeper. The breadboard layer. 
This is the top side of it. Its functions and layout are exactly the same as a regular breadboard. And the button side, with contact springs below each row to deliver the signals. And the circuit layer. On the top side of circuit layer, we can put the printed circuit paper on it. In order to fixate the paper circuit, we apply contact springs on the both ends of diagonal S boundary. This is the button side with contact springs seat for signal conduction. I will explain it in the next slide. The electrical signals are transmitted through layers. The two outer columns are used for vertical cross-layer signal conduction. And the two middle columns contact with conductive traces. And the inner columns are specially designed for power and ground. So we put the layers vertically like this. And this is the final outcome of circuit stack. To go in detail, this is a breadboard layer and three circuit layers. You'll notice that there are two more layers on the stack, which are aluminum plastic panels. They are hard plastics to prevent the PCBs to flex after tightening the screws. Now I'm going to show you how to use circuit stack. For example, if you want to make a countdown timer, simply we just Google it. As I just mentioned, many open source projects can be found on the internet and be downloaded. In our case, we choose the popular freezing platform. Freezing is a user-friendly tool to generate circuit schematics, to accelerate the process from digital schematics to physical circuits. We've made a circuit stack extension. It transforms the internal wires of breadboard schematics, schematics on freezing into unrouted Eagle files. Eagle is an industrial PCB design software we use to generate printed circuit traces. Next, click, click the auto routing button to generate a routed printed circuit. Next, we, pr we print it out. This is the result. Then put it into the Slack, a stack. <laughs> The circuit layer, the upper layer, and we can start to put all the components on it. So the difference between breadboard and circuit stack is obviously all those messy wires are compressed and printed onto this paper. So we end up with a neat board like this. But we don't just stop here. Now we want to extend the circuit. All we need to do is to drag some components on freezing. Then we print the paper circuit and slide it into the stack. And it's done. It's just so simple. <laughs> That's the walkthrough of using circuit stack. So what makes circuit stack stand out? Here. We're using four features to compare the existing prototyping tools and circuit stack. Breadboard, the most common prototyping tools at hand. Supports component reusability and circuit reconfigurability. Almost every circuit design starts with breadboard, but the time spent on wiring and debugging is huge. Next, printable circuits. They effecti effectively reduce the wiring process and accelerate iteration speed. But considering its lack of component reusability and circuit reconfigurability, a little change on the design can take a lot of time. Beyond breadboard and printable circuits, modularized circuits are also popular in use. Take little bits for example. It prevents users from wiring and waste of components. but almost every modularized works requires customized components. Therefore, they do not support enough components compared with breadboard. Last, our circuit stack. 
It preserves the advantage of breadboard and print, printed circuit that makes iterative trial and error becomes fast and effective. Furthermore, its breadboard compatibility allows users to retrieve all their useful resources on the web and can easily modify the design. So briefly summarize the, prop the properties of Circuit Stack. First, we produce a transformation from virtual file to physical circuits. Thus, reduce a lot of handiwork. Second, circuit changes are easy and fast. For minor changes, you can still plug wires on the breadboard layer to make connections. On the other hand, for major changes, all you need to do is to reprint a new paper circuit. This makes circuits built on circuit stack reusable and reconfigurable. Third, without wiring by hand, no wiring error occurs in our system. And the last, we support multiple layers, which can assist complex circuit constructions. Of course, there are some limitations and future works need to be accomplished. First, the electrical resi resistance of printed circuit paper we currently use is too large. So we are finding some alternatives with lower resistance. Fortunately, we can replace our current printed circuit paper with printing from WIST 2015, which prov provides low electrical resistance. Second, as you can see, all the wires are only from Arduino for control signals. So Arduino Shield is a good way to remove those wires. Then we need literally zero wires. Last but not the least, every layer of circuit stack are fixed through screws and nuts. It still takes some effort to tighten them. So we are working on a magnet snapping version to reduce more manual assembly efforts. So what is circuit stack? It's a hybrid system combining breadboarding and printable circuit technology. With reusability and reconfigurability, that makes circuit prototyping more efficient and more user-friendly. So that is printed breadboard circuit stack. Okay, time for a couple of questions. So, given that the prior uh, talk was about debugging, I'm, I'm wondering what your experience is with how circuit stacks change the process of, of debugging, because you've taken out some sources of of error, but it, it's also no longer visible in a, in a single place what your connectivity actually is, right? You may have to go back and forth between referencing the layout that's now inside the stack and what you, what you wired on top. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, as we have mentioned, the effort we have done is to remove all the manual wiring, effort, wiring errors. So. Indeed, if you design a uh, perhaps wrong circuit, you will have in troubles dealing with it because you have to look back and forth. But in our case, if you can design a functional circuit, you won't face the problem that we all have faced that you just misplace the wire or components. So we're trying to give you more time to design your circuits without checking all those possible manual errors. So in our case, you can debug, but you have to make sure your design is working step by step. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions, then um, I want to remind people that you can vote for best talk, and I think wrapping your introduction. <laughs> I, I don't want to bias anyone, but. All right, let's thank the speakers.